A uh, reminder, if you have a question for Coach, hit the raise hand feature uh, in the bottom right corner of the Zoom. Uh, Coach, uh, why don't you start off the call before we start taking questions about uh, recapping your season. And then uh, when the news came down in mid-March, uh, it was between the, the diving championships for the NCAs and then the, uh, the swimming part of the championships. So uh, if you can uh, recap those two uh, parts of the season and then we'll start taking questions. Sure, absolutely. And thank you for having me today. Um, for us in the swimming and diving program, this season was a, a really exciting season for us as we moved into our new facility that has long been awaited uh, for both the community and WBU. So we started out the season in our uh, old natatorium um, and uh, made a lot of priorities in our transition to the new facility. Um, our men's team uh, had, a, I think, a very strong season. Our first uh, dual meet was our only loss of the season. We added some new uh, teams to the meet schedule this year, and we got to travel down and compete against uh, SMU, and we had a, a real solid meet there. And Our women's uh, program had a very solid pr uh, season as well. We went undefeated in the Big 12, and and then, Brian, as you mentioned, we got uh, to the conclusion of our season and we hosted, um, uh, well, during the season, we hosted our first uh, midseason invite. And then we hosted the Big 12 championships at the end of February. And uh, both those were very successful meets for, for not only us, but for the teams that came. And at our, our conference meet, at the Big 12 meet, um, about a week and a half later, we learned that uh, two of our swimmers, Hunter Armstrong and David Dixon had been invited to the NCAA championships. And then uh, Coach Mike uh, Greitner and uh, his program hosted the Zone Diving Championships a little over a week later after our Big 12 championships. And out of that, we had two more young men qualify. And those were the first um, divers to qualify for NCAAs, I believe, in maybe over 30 years. So. Um, that was really exciting for Mike and his program moving forward. And um, so we had four men qualify for NCAAs and we were in the midst of training for uh, getting our travel arrangements ready and training and, and preparing these young men. And then uh, as everybody knows, the news came down that uh, first it was the men's basketball tournament. And then very shortly after, there was discussion of maybe hosting the NCAAs with nobody in the stands. And then uh, I think it was midweek or by Thursday of that week, it was informed that all, uh, all NCAA uh, championships for the winter sports had been canceled. So that was a little difficult. Uh, obviously, these young men and women put in so much time and effort to get to that level and, and to have the opportunity to compete. Um, was a disappointment, but um, it was something that we dealt with and it's moving forward. All right, Vic, thanks. Your first question here comes from Greg Hunter. Greg, go ahead. So Vic, stick with the Aquatic Center. Um, obviously, as you said, just recently opened. What's it meant in terms of training, in terms of your the, the ability to host meets, obviously the Big 12, and then recruiting? Sure. Well, um, I'll take the last part first. Uh, uh, the Aquatic Center on recruiting has actually been impactful for the past couple of years. I mean, once they put a hole in the ground, we were taking our recruits out to the facility and showing them the progress. And, and so it's been a big, huge uh, benefit um, for our recruiting. Um, in regards to uh, the Aquatic Center and what it's done for the team, um, it's just, it's, it, we're very, very blessed to have a facility like this. And the, probably the biggest aspect that people don't realize or didn't realize, um, programs like ours, when we were in an eight lane facility and we were a combined men and women's program, you don't get to train together as a team. You have certain groups coming in on certain days and certain times. And in the afternoon, you have a couple different uh, training groups and start times. Typically for us, we'd have a two o'clock group and a 3.30 group at the natatorium. So when we moved into the new facility at uh, Milan Park, um, the biggest benefit that we both as a staff and a team saw was being able to arrive as a team, train as a team, and leave as a team. Um, and that really helped uh, build our cohesiveness and, and our culture as we move forward. 
Your next question comes from Kevin Kendrick. Go ahead, Kevin. Vic, following up on the training together as a team angle, um, and I mean, you tend to think of, people tend to think of swimming as an individual sport other than some of the relays, but what are some of those benefits of training as a team you know, even for the individual swimmers and not having to do the split up by groups. Sure, sure. So um, you're, you are correct. Swimming is a, is a very individual sport, but um, at the collegiate level, they see a little bit of it at the high school level and they see a little bit of it at the club level. But at the collegiate level, it's the most team our sport is going to become. You, yes, we have individuals, um, but... Uh, each individual has an impactful role. Each individual has a chance to, in a dual meet, to score points. You know, a couple of our dual meets came down to five, ten points. I think our women lost to Villanova by under ten points. So um, being able to train as a team uh, and not in those separate groups has been a, it's been a huge impact because you have people that swim different events and have people that swim similar events and you're able to have those guys train. Um, maybe you have some people that are backstrokers that are more specific to the shorter backstroke events, maybe 50 or the 100 versus someone that's more of a 200 backstroker. And we were able to put those guys and ladies together all at the same time and have them work out together. So, the, you know, and then just the fact that you're with your teammates, being able to to support your teammates as you go through a difficult practice or, you know, as, as you go through the week, having everybody again coming and going at the same time, being able to have team meetings um, that aren't disruptive to the training, we're able to place them in at a better time. So overall, it's just been a, a good benefit. All right, your next question from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So Vic, back to the to the meets. Um, what did you find out in in hosting the Big Twelves? So obviously, the biggest meet I think WVU's certainly ever hosted. And, and what are your hopes for the future in hosting other major events? Sure, sure. Um, well, I, I mean, every year, uh, or not every year, but um, with the new facility, every meet has become a new opportunity to learn and get better at it. That's why we ran our mid-season invite knowing that we were hosting the Big 12s in February to help work out some of the kinks. And um, just learned yesterday that the Big 12 has um, decided on a rotation between us and Texas. So Texas will host the Big 12 championships next year in 2021, and then we'll have it back in 2022, and that'll be the rotation. Uh, for the Big 12. So we'll be hosting the Big 12 championships on even years. Um, and then you just learn, I call it a living building. It's, it's getting to be more and more of a living building every year or every month. Um, and uh, the staff over there has been great. They've worked really hard to, to, to do everything we need to do to host these types of meets. And as we move forward, um, you know, I think uh, Mike is hosting the regional uh, zone championships again next year for diving. And eventually down the line, we would love to get in the process of uh, hopefully hosting NCAAs. All right. Your next question from uh, John Antonic. Go ahead, John. You got on here a little bit late, um, but I'm curious. Um, I know you talked about when the facility opened, the momentum you were going to get from recruiting from that. Has there been a pause with with the virus, or have you still been able to capitalize on that momentum? Yeah, there's definitely been a pause, and that you know a couple things on that have, have impacted us. A year ago, um, our sport was uh, our recruiting rules changed to where we were able to start contacting juniors uh, June fifteenth uh, after their sophomore year. So a lot of our year uh, this season has been working with those juniors and communicating with those juniors. And we had a good fall recruiting and, and we have some commitments. And then we had a, a big group coming in in April. And uh, unfortunately, uh, in talking with them, they're asking us, you know, when and, and how um, we're going to get them on campus. And unfortunately, we just don't know that answer right now. So we're, we're staying in touch with the recruits, letting them know what's going on in the processes and, um, you know, but I think we're not the only program or the only sport across the country that is having to figure out a different way to recruit. As, as we're seeing now, states are having different levels of reopening. So we may be talking to somebody 
uh, you know, in a state that is open and can get here where another one of our recruits may be in a state where it's still closed down and we can't get them here. So I think you're going to see a, a process of um, a couple months before we can get back to the normal recruiting cycle and getting the kids on campus and showing them what WVU has to offer. Uh, next question from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So Vic, what was recruiting like when you had to try to bring them into the, <clears throat> the natatorium? And, and are you with a whole different level of recruit now that you have a full facility that's, that's obviously sparkling new? Sure, sure. Um, well, when we were recruiting at the natatorium, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you always highlight the things that you do well. And out of the natatorium, we were getting kids to NCAAs and we were competing well in the Big 12 Conference and getting kids to their international and national level uh, championship meets. And then when we moved into the uh, Aquatic Center at Milan Park, it just opens up. I mean, you know, for us, it's not an NCAA uh uh, event or distance, excuse me, but 50 meter being able to train long course uh, is a huge impact for many of our student athletes because of the international competitions that are held. held. We, um, you know, we had several kids this spring that were heading back for their national championships uh, to try and qualify for their Olympics. So being able to have a 50 meter course uh, and be able to train long course is a huge benefit. And, the, and then, yes, our, our um, uh, recruiting has, has definitely changed in the, in the type of athlete that we're, we're being able to, to show our facility to and show our results to has changed. Next question here from John. Go ahead, John. Along those lines, we, we were talking to Neil Brown yesterday, and he said one of the things that they're doing is – taking the campus to athletes, virtual tours and things like that. You have a really good detail with your facility. Have you considered doing some of that, try to bring the campus to them, them know what you offer? Yeah, most of the, I mean, we, we can't start talking to our new recruits until June 15th. So most of the, the recruits um, that we've already been in communication with over the last year, the first thing we do uh, is we have been sending them uh, the, it used to be the diagrams, then it was the pictures, and uh, and now we're sending them, you know, the, the aquatic center. Which, as soon as we get them on campus, we get them out there and show them the aquatic center and what we have. And um, and then in our normal recruiting emails, we do uh, the first things we try to find out is what they're interested in studying, um, and then we, we give them links to that school uh, we put them in connection with the uh, visitor center. And so most of the kids uh, that we've already communicated with uh, have seen the campus either virtually or, or have been here on campus. When we start in June with our juniors uh, for the 2022 class, um, that's exactly what we'll be doing. We'll be starting again. Um, you know, we were, we were hopeful to have a camp this year. And of course, um, you know, USA Swimming meets uh, bring kids into the facility that uh, you're able to show your facility at, at a younger age and things of that nature. So, so those things have changed and hopefully as we get back uh, to some sort of normalcy, those meets will return and we'll be able to get them on campus. Your next question here comes from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So coach, I assume almost all your athletes have scattered back to their hometowns like, like all the other sports and, and students at WVU, but most pools are closed. How do you train right now as a swimmer when you can't swim? Yeah, yeah. well, um, yeah, uh, most of our student athletes have, have returned home. We do have a few here on campus as well. Um, and we're, we're sending out uh, daily dry land practices. Um, the main thing that we're trying to work on is keeping them active. Uh, and getting them into some sort of schedule, daily schedule, so that they're uh, able to return as best they can. But yes, swimming is a different sport where once you're in the water, it's a little different. So um, what I've been talking to the kids about and, and what we, we feel is kind of an exciting thing about it um, is uh, when we do get back, we will be able to kind of get back all on the same level and, and start from there as a group and move forward. I've already told the kids um, we're hopeful to be opening up here in the next six weeks. 
uh, and be able to have kids that are here in, in Morgantown in the pool. So we've told them we're not going to compete this summer. We're going to spend the summer working on our uh, technique and stroke and uh, building them back up gradually as far as distance and, and aerobic capacity and getting them ready for the fall. All right, your next question from Joe Mitchin. Joe, go ahead. Hey, Coach, you mentioned Hunter uh, qualifying for NCAAs as a freshman uh, this year. It's the second time in three years now you've had a freshman do that. Is, does that kind of speak on maybe an uptick of, of kids coming into the program that are you know, either immediately college ready or maybe it's uh, the philosophy that you have it proves to be working? Well, you know, probably a little bit of everything, you know, I think, uh, you know, we're really excited about our incoming freshman class on both sides. And yes, I think um, the uh, type of athlete that is looking at our program now is, is seeing the, the longevity of our results here. Um, you know, we, we missed an NCAAs here or there, but we're pretty consistent at getting to NCAAs. So, um, and then, you know, the staff has done a great job uh, the past year and a half to two years of really, uh, you know, finding our needs, what we need to do, and then finding the athletes that can come in and help us right away. All right, a reminder, if you have a question, use the raise hand feature. If not, this will be our last question. Um, go ahead, Kevin Kender. Coach, have you been talking to other coaches, you know, for ideas on, you know, how to either how to communicate, work out things, things like that? And then this is kind of a fun question. Of the ones you've talked with, who has the best quarantine haircut right now? Uh, um, a lot of my communication is is through phone call or text. I, I haven't been doing a lot of Zoom uh, meetings with other coaches, but yes, I've been reaching out and and um, you know we've been talking a little bit about you know what we're doing and how we're doing it here or how they're doing it there. And um, you know the main thing that we we've, we've been focused on and what I told the team is sure this is a unique and different situation for everybody across the world um, and, and we want to take this time to find out and, and take this opportunity to, to learn what we can do to make ourselves better as individuals, make ourselves better as teammates and make ourselves better as a program. So uh, we started a few weeks ago, we're doing class meetings um, and each member of the staff uh, meets with them uh, weekly. Um, we've had various topics. We're not doing them this week because of uh, the dead week and next week because of finals, but various topics. And then we do a team meeting um, at the end of the at the end of the week where all the all the classes come together and we kind of discuss it as a team. Uh, so that we again are just kind of moving forward. The 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 difference right now, unfortunately, is the spring training season is quite fun it's a little more relaxed um, and they've all missed that and they've all uh, you know we're looking at what we can do to, to come out of it so uh, the main thing is we're just trying to communicate with them uh, you know once a week letting them know uh, what we can do sent out an email today about uh, kids that are moving out on campus so we're just getting the information out to them as best we can and as fast as we can um, but really, we're just sharing ideas with other coaches. And then uh, the main thing is communicating with our student athletes, letting them know uh, what we're doing and trying to, to do the best that we can. I think um, the uh, uncertainty for everybody kind of creeps in and, and the uncertainty for them right now is what are we doing? And we try to answer those questions as best we can. All right, you have one last question here from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, <clears throat> last one for me, Vic. And I know your family's been in, involved with the youth swimming aspect in Morgantown in the past. And I, I, again, sort of the new facility question. How has the community uh, accepted the facility and, and, and what's it done for those type of programs like you know your wife's wet led in the past? Sure, sure. Well, again, I think um, you know what I've noticed uh, uh, as far as how it's impacted the community um, on uh, many Saturdays, I'm not typically there on Sunday, but on many Saturdays, the community pool has been uh, very well attended and used. So I think that's a, a huge benefit as far as um, how it's impacted the community on the, on the age group level. And, uh, my wife is the general chair for West Virginia Swimming. And um, so the, she's actually been having 
uh, weekly meetings on several levels with USA Swimming and then all the coaches here. And um, the facility has been a great resource. We were supposed to hold the, the West Virginia Short Course Championships in March. Uh, in fact, I think we were one of the last LSCs in the country to finally give in and shut the meet down. Um, but the benefit's been really good. Our, our program, uh, the Club Mountaineer Aquatics program has grown. Um, I know from the Aquatic Center side, their lessons and, and program is going really well. And I think overall, we're just going to see it grow more and more inside the community. All right. Thank you, Vic. I'm going to kick it over here to Brian here to finish us off. Sure. 